This bill has nothing to do with science, and it really has very little to do with climate change, even though that's what it's about. It has to do with power. And I don't want to repeat what other people have said here, but this amendment is more important than the bill. It really doesn't matter what you think about climate change or what you think should be done about it. The question is, who should do the doing? And I really wish, I hope people really have read this thing through. I'm not going to go over it in every detail, but there's some key passages. First of all, on page 2, lines 11 to 13, it directs the existing council to meet, to come up with a plan that meets economy-wide enforceable targets. That's the key language. Economy-wide doesn't just mean the government. And enforceable means enforceable. We'll get to that later. Then, later on that same page, as Leader Filippi pointed out, if a plan directs an agency to promulgate regulations, thereby implying they can do that, the agency must do so. Then it goes on, if I haven't even gotten to the issue about enforceability, which would be a subject to another amendment, but it allows anybody right now to file a lawsuit to mandate the state or anyone else, private industry too, and I know it's a bone of contention, we'll talk about that later, to file a lawsuit against any of them and won't make them comply with the plan. Here's the problem with this. The target here is inflexible. You can measure carbon emissions. You can measure greenhouse gases. The EPA does it. I have data here, which may come up as the subject of another amendment. You can measure this specifically. The plan says you must meet these targets. It doesn't say that meeting the targets makes sense for the rest of society. Maybe by 2050, when it's net zero emissions, there'll be some wondrous new technology that makes all of this moot. Maybe not. Maybe by 2030, when I forget the percentage, 40 or 35 percent, maybe the technology will improve. I tend to doubt it. It's improving, but I tend to doubt we'll get there, but we'll see. But we can talk about the APA, and we can talk about regulators, we can talk about all the different people and all their expertise. It doesn't matter. Their plan must meet those targets. The issue is who has the power to do this. These restrictions, these, these mandates are mandatory. So it doesn't matter how, as Leader Filippi said, how ruinous the plan is. They must put it out there. I don't know what that plan is going to look like. None of us do. But no matter what it looks like, we have no control over it now. As those of you who know me well know, I'm not prone to hyperbole the last few moments accepted. This truly is the worst bill that I've seen on the floor in 13 years in this chamber. And it's precisely because we are, to reiterate what Deputy Speaker Lima said, what Leader Filippi said, we are giving away the power. I went back and looked at the video when the first version of this was passed in 2014. Chairman Handy was the, uh, then Chairman Handy was, it was his bill. The debate session was about three, four minutes, and the vote was 62 to 6. There wasn't much of a debate. You know why? Because it wasn't mandatory. We weren't giving away our power. We were creating a council, and we were asking them to come up with plans. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't, there's a lot of things in this bill I don't like, but I would actually vote for the bill if this amendment passed. We are abdicating our responsibility by giving away the power. It's a cop-out, and it's wrong.